So we've talked about hooking up the soil click sensor to the Hunter controllers, but if you plan on using it in conjunction with either a wireless solar sink or a hardwired solar sink, we'll be hooking things up a little bit differently. Soil click with solar sink is a great combination because while solar sink adjusts run times according to the climate conditions, the soil click prevents irrigation when the soil is still too wet. When connecting the soil click module to an X-Core or Pro-C controller that will have a solar sink connected, instead of connecting the soil click white wires to the sensor terminals as instructed before, you will need to interrupt the common wire. The controller's sensor terminals will be dedicated to the solar sink sensor as usual, so we'll use a common interrupt to let the soil click inhibit watering. To interrupt the common wire, snip the common wire, connect the one white wire from the soil click module to each of these stripped ends. The connection is now complete. So if you're connecting your soil click sensor to an i system that's already using either a wireless or a hardwired solar sink, we're going to have to configure both devices in the face pack separately. As well with the i we have at least two, if not three, independent sensor inputs that we can physically connect the hardware to. As usual, when connecting a solar sink to an i controller, the solar sink sensor wires must be connected to a set of sensor terminals at the controller so that the controller can respond to rain and freeze inputs. Since we are incorporating another sensor and the i controller has more than one set of sensor inputs, you can connect the soil click to the second set of sensor terminals, S2, or S3 in the metal version of this controller. Once the solar sink is connected to S1 and soil click to S2, you need to configure them at the face pack. First, make sure that the seasonal adjustment function is delegated to solar sync on all programs you want solar sync to control. Keep in mind that this is done by program, so you may have to have a program that contains all the stations that you don't wish to be controlled by solar sync. Also, be sure to have SYN 1 configured as solar sync and SYN 2 or 3 configured as click. This is done by turning the dial to Advanced Features, selecting Sensor Configuration, and changing SYN 1 to Solar Sync. As far as SYN 2, you can leave it as click, since Soil Click is a click type sensor. Finally, you need to indicate which stations will be affected by Soil Click sensor. This is done in the Set Sensor Operation dial position. Here you can designate the sensors you wish to enable for each station. For example, if you want Station 1's runtime to be adjusted based on data collected by Solar Sync, but you don't want it to be kept off by Soil Click if moisture is detected in the soil, then you can leave the check mark on SYN 1 to keep the Solar Sync sensor active, but remove it from SYN 2 to disable Soil Click on this particular station. Remember, this is done station by station. So when connecting a soil click sensor to an ACC controller that also uses solar sync, we want to hook the two systems up separately on their own sensor terminals and map each of the pieces separately in the face pack. The solar sync sensor connects through the ET terminals on ACC controllers. Often the solar sync rain function is mapped to one of the four sensor terminals, usually S1. Sometimes the freeze function is also mapped to another terminal such as S2. You may then connect soil click to any unused sensor terminals in the controller. In the ACC, it is quite possible to have two or three different soil click modules connected to different click terminals. In this way, you can have different sensors shut down different programs corresponding to different areas of the landscape. If you need more information, consult the owner's manual or look us up at hunterindustries.com for more support. And thanks for watching.